Hey, and welcome back to day 18 of the 31 day challenge. And today we're gonna go over function calling. Uh, today I'm gonna go over a diagram, kind of explain it, and then we'll go through the code and go through an example. So the first thing is we're gonna have three agents, right? So we're gonna have this group chat here that's gonna be comprised of a user, assistant one, and assistant two. We're also gonna have a function over here that's just simply going to save whatever the response is from the LLM to a file. And whenever the group chat executes, it's going to first start out with calling assistant one, and then assistant one will make a call to the LLM. And that when it gets the response back, then the user is going to execute the function tied to assistant one, which will be the saved file. So whatever output is from the LLM, then the user is going to save that to a file. And then whenever that's done, then the user will end up calling assistant two, the assistant two will perform whatever message it we ask it to, which will be basically just for, just come up with some famous quote that somebody said. Then what happens is once assistant two gets that message, then it's going to also call the same function. And I'll show you how that's done. And then the user proxy, once it gets the, once the assistant two gets the response back from the LLM, the user proxy agent will then also call the same function again, based on the response assistant two got from the LLM. And then it'll save that to a file. And then once that's done, it'll just do it. It'll just do it one more time. And then it'll call the user. The user might go in a loop a couple of times, but then it'll terminate and we're done. So how does that work, right? So like, how does this function calling actually work? Well, there are two things that we need to know. There's register for execution and register for LLM. The register for execution is always going to be tied to the user agent because the user agent actually has to execute the function, right? So the assistant agent doesn't execute the function, right? What the assistant agent does is which we have to register for the LLM. So the register for LLM will be tied to the assistant, uh, assistant two and also assistant one. And what they're going to do is this means that they get a response back from the LLM, from the model that we're using. And then they're going to take that and put that into the function as the parameter. And then the user agent who is tied to the register for execution is actually going to execute that function with uh, whatever message the assistant got from the LLM and then call whatever we have in the function, which in this case is to save the file. So it'll go through the Python code to save the file. And this and something to note here that you can have one function set to multiple assistant agents, right? It's not just one function per agent. One function can be set to multiple agents. And that's perfectly fine because when it gets to that agent's turn in the group chat, or if you have sequential chats, then when it's their turn, they'll call that function. Well, let's look at the code and see how this works. Okay, so here we have the code. Uh, we have a config list where we get the config list uh, from JSON file which means we get the model. And I'll set this up so you can also use Olama or LM Studio or something else other than OpenAI's API. Then we have the LLM config. We just have the config list and the timeout set to two minutes. And here we have assistant one and assistant two. These are just very simple assistants that are just here to save something to a file. The user proxy agent, this is also pretty simple. And here is where, and here is the function saved a file that we just went over. Okay, so like I mentioned in the design, the user proxy is going to be registered for execution, right? Because the user proxy agent is going to actually execute whatever is inside this function. Assistant one and assistant two are going to be registered for the LLM. The idea is that whatever, whenever it's assistant one or assistant two, when it's their time in the group chat to call something to the LLM, like grab a famous quote from an author, then whatever, whatever response they get back is going to be put inside as the parameter to this function. And so all we do in here is we have a random number from one to 1000 so that when we go to write this file, so with open saved file, give it that random number as a string that txt, and we're going to write, meaning we're going to create the file. Then we just write that message. So we're here. We're just, we're just saving the message, uh, inside of our directory on the left. And this is general, and this is the big difference. So like a few versions ago, like I think quite a few versions ago, they were, they were using uh, JSON, a lot of JSON, which which worked, but it did get kind of messy. So having these are what called what are called decorators really helps make this cleaner. It's just the idea is you have to understand how it's working, and that's what I hope you get from this. So we can do this one of two ways, right? We have this group chat here, and you can either initiate the group chat just like this, which I'll have I'll have this code here, uh, or we can have what is relatively new is a user proxy dot initiate chats, right? So you have an array of chats that you can start essentially. The user proxy is going to initiate a chat with the recipient, which will be assistant one. The message is give a quote from a famous author. Clear history is just set to true. Uh, silent is false because I want, if silent, if silent was true, it wouldn't log anything or it would log 
it would only the minimal things needed, but a lot of things just wouldn't, you wouldn't see in the terminal. Then after that conversation is done, it's going to move on to assistant two. I want to give me a quote from a different famous author. Make sure it isn't the same quote from the last LLM call. We'll see if that works. And then the summary method reflection with LLM. Okay. Okay. So let's give it a shot. Okay, so it's finished uh, on the left-hand side here. We do have two different save files. Let's actually make sure they're different quotes. So the first one is from Oscar Wilde, be yourself, everyone else is already taken. The second one is awesome, spread love everywhere you go. Let no one ever come to you without leaving happier. And this is from Mother Teresa. Awesome. So again, the thing to remember is we had one function, save to file, that was assigned to two different assistant agents. The user proxy is registered for execution, so it'll actually execute this function once the assistant or some uh, some agent brings in the response from the LLM as the parameter. So if we look back here, right, this is where this is where it started. Um, the the first chat was give a quote from a famous author with there's no there's no carryover, right? So the user proxy is talking to assistant one, saying give me a quote from a famous author. The assistant one reached out to the model, got this response back from Oscar Wilde, and then assistant one to user proxy says so the suggested tool call is save the file, the function, and then the user proxy. So this is just where I printed out the message in the beginning of the function call. And then the user proxy is actually executing the function and getting the response back. So the response back is I just had it return the message that was given in. So we return something uh, for whatever reason. Right now they have it where this huge, it, it's not necessary, but it, like they encourage you to return something or else you get like a bunch of warnings, right? So just just for sanity, just I just do that so I don't have all the warnings. Okay, then the resistant one just says, okay, I've saved this um, quote to a file. And then I think uh, it just kind of loops here. But now it's going to start a new chat with the following message. Give me a quote from a different famous author. Make sure it isn't the same quote as the last element call. So it finished the first chat, right? So let me just uh, lower that. So it finished this chat. Now we're starting, it's the recipient assistant assistant two, and it's going to give a different message to this recipient. The assistant two is saying to the user proxy, the suggested tool call is again, save the file because they're all registered to the assistant agent with the message from mother Teresa. And then why just, you know, we print this again. So the user proxy is executing the function and then the response, okay, is just the message that was brought in, right? So now uh, the user proxy is executing the function. Um, the quote has been saved to a file and we're done and just kind of loops back and forth, right? That's why I had the max reply. Uh, we can change, you can change it to the termination is better. Terminate message is better, but this is just to kind of show you how it works, right? And then that's where we got the two different text files. Okay, so we'll go through one more example. And this one is a little different, right? So I have, so in this function, we define three different parameters and this annotated, which we saw in the last example, they kind of, Autogen kind of forces this so that um, we know the type that this is supposed to be when it comes in, meaning that it just can't be anything. They force you to um, know the type that's coming in. And it's probably, so you say annotated, the type um, of the parameter coming in, then like a little description for it. And then you see here for the base and quote currency, we have the same thing, right? So the type is currency symbol, which up here, will just either be USD or EUR, basically the string literal. And then we go ahead and set them to USD and EUR. What do we have here? The user proxy is registering for execution because the user proxy is actually going to execute this. And then the currency bot, which is the assistant agent, is what's registering for the LLM. So whenever we ask the currency bot to do something with the model, whenever whatever it brings back as the base amount, it's going to put that here and then execute this function. Let's do a bigger number USD. What is that in euros? Okay, so it finished. So again, this was the message that we initiated with. So the currency bot suggested tool call is currency calculator, which is the only one we have, but that's just making sure with the arguments as the base amount, the base currency and the quote currency. So the base currency and the quote currency were already defined, like they had, we have defaults. You could change these, right? But we have defaults. And then it got, it retrieved the base amount from the message. So now this is gonna send this to the user proxy. So now the user proxy to the current, to the currency bot is going to execute this and we're gonna get a response back, which is this number. So this is the exchange rate from USD to Euro. And then finally the currency bot returns because after the user proxy executed, uh, executed the function, it's saying this is the currency um, exchange. Let me know if you liked how I used Excala Draw or if you would like me to kind of do like live drawings and then maybe that's a visuals like that are better for you or might be easier to understand some of these concepts.
let me know your thoughts, right? I want to I want to teach and I want to do it in a way that you can actually learn and absorb the information. So let me know what works, maybe what doesn't work, what I can improve on. You know, let me know in the comments. I appreciate you watching. Again, we're over halfway. Finally, I feel like that was kind of the biggest hurdle was make sure we're over halfway. Um, but we're going to have some a couple more steps. And then we're going to lead into some more UI where we actually can perform things like reading from a PDF, asking the PDF questions once we've ingested that into a vector database and things like that. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you. I will see you next video.